time has come for Tony. He has been disturbing my kingdom with his prayers and powerful tongues. An end has come to his existence. It is time I take over his life. Tony. 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 Stand up now and pray. Stand up. Devil is a liar. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust, his truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flitteth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and shew him my salvation. Says the Lord of hosts. Romans 8.31 says what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I command the devil and resist him. Flee, in the name of Jesus. Ah! This man has done it again. Tony, you think you're strong in your faith, don't you? You've prayed for others, you've delivered them from my grasp. But do you really think you're untouchable? I've seen your weaknesses, your doubts, your fears. I know how to make you stumble, how to make you fall. Your faith is not as unshakable as you believe. I will whisper in your ear, sow seeds of doubt in your heart, and watch as you question everything you once held dear. You may have delivered others, but can you deliver yourself from me? Ah! Thank you Jesus, for waking me up to pray. Thank you Heavenly Father, for opening my spiritual eyes. Thank you King of Glory for teaching me what to say. Thank you Almighty Father, for fighting my battles. Thank you Jehovah Nisi for always telling me what to do. I'll worship you with every breath in me. Tony. I want to personally commend you for your outstanding work and dedication to our company. Your commitment and smartness have not gone unnoticed. Today, I am thrilled to announce that you are being promoted to the position of Managing Director. This promotion comes with a brand new car, along with several other valuable gifts, as a token of our appreciation for your hard work. As Managing Director, you will be responsible for leading our company to new heights. Your leadership and vision will be crucial in guiding us towards continued success. We have full confidence in your abilities, and we know that you will excel in this new role. Additionally, we have arranged for a female personal assistant to support you in your new position. She will assist you with your day-to-day -day tasks and ensure that you have everything you need to succeed. We expect you to resume work early, manage the company with diligence and integrity, and represent us at various seminars and meetings. We are confident that you will make us proud. Congratulations, Tony. This promotion is well deserved, and we look forward to seeing all that you will accomplish in your new role. This is huge sir. I wasn't expecting this at all. I have been waiting for this day for a long time. Thank you so much for this incredible honor and opportunity. 
I am truly grateful for the trust and confidence you have placed in me. I am humbled by this promotion and the recognition of my work. I want to assure you that I will do everything in my power to justify your faith in me. I am excited about the opportunity to lead our company and take it to new heights. I understand the responsibility that comes with this role, and I am fully committed to fulfilling it with integrity and diligence. I also want to thank you for the generous gifts and the support of a personal assistant. I am confident that with her help, I will be able to manage my responsibilities effectively and efficiently. Thank you for your words of assurance. Your personal assistant must be waiting for you now. She'll introduce herself to you. Thank you once again, sir. Good morning, sir. I am Fiona, your new personal assistant. It's good to have you here, Fiona. I am Tony by name. If I need anything, I'll inform you. Thank you. All right, sir. What was that? I heard a strange sound. You heard something? Yes, I did. It may be the dogs in the next building. Really? Yes, sir. I'll take my leave now. Thank you, Jesus, for this blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for the promotion, for the car and other gifts. My long-time dream has finally become a reality. It has been my long-time wish to be a managing director here in this company. I now have a big office, a personal assistant and a nice car. There is nothing you cannot do, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name I have pray, Amen. This strange sound again? The Lord is trying to speak to me. Who is there? Please, come in. Your attention is needed immediately in the boardroom. The CEO requests that you meet him and some clients for meeting immediately. I was planning to have a quiet time with God. What did you say, sir? Oh, no. It's nothing. I'll be on my way immediately. That's very good. I am sorry to disrupt the meeting, sir, but can I see you for a minute outside? All right, let's go. Sir, it's 6 p.m. already. It's getting late. Most importantly, I have a church program by 6 p.m. I ought to have been in church by now. I am the one anchoring the Bible study and prayer session. Tony, are you serious right now? We are trying to secure a deal worth millions in there, and all you could think of is the time in a church program. Are you sure you are ready to be the MD of this company? Do you want me to replace you immediately since you want to go to church? No, sir. I beg you. I'll send a text message that I won't be coming, sir. I can't afford to lose this position, sir. We are surely getting the deal, sir. Let's go back inside. Better. I am so tired right now. Straight to bed immediately. Tony, it is time for us to communicate like we always do. Stand up from your sleep. We need to communicate. Tony. Tony. You haven't communicate with me like you used to do today. I have so many things to tell you. Tony, let's talk. I forgot my daily morning devotion. Oh my goodness. I need to pray immediately. Come in. Good morning, sir. The CEO requests to see you immediately. It is very important and has to do with the meeting we did yesterday. Oh. The deal? I'll be on my way immediately. Good morning, sir. You asked to see me. I hope all is well. Did you pass the night here? You look stressed. I am very okay, Tony. You see, I passed the night here in the office. I'll shower later. These are the sacrifices I make for this company. There are times you'll have to do the same. But guess what? 
What, sir? We won the contract. Wow. This is huge. Congratulations to us, sir. Yes. It is indeed massive. On this note, we have to celebrate. Since today is Friday, why don't we go for weekend vacation? Just to celebrate. We'll have a lot of activities to participate in. You and Fiona, with me and my partner. Do not worry, bills on me. I'll even forward some money into your account. Thank you, sir. I am so grateful. This is going to be a great weekend. What's that? I just remembered that we might not be back until Sunday evening. Of course. I have a Friday night program tomorrow at church, meetings and Bible study on Saturday, and I must be in church to coordinate the departments in which I am the head, sir. Wait, so because of all that, you want to turn down my offer? Seems you are not ready for this role, because it seems you are prioritizing church more than all these. You have been in the church for how long now? Yet, they did not do anything to help your career when you were the one at the front desk. That is to show you that they don't care. Why don't you call them that you'll be very busy for now and they should find a replacement for you? Then, when you are less busy, you can then go back. You are right, sir. I do not want to lose my job. I'll call the church and inform them of this latest development. I'll go with you for the trip, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's okay. We have a presentation in four hours' time. I'll send you all the necessary information. Kindly prepare the points. You'll be the one presenting. You can go now. All right, sir. I'll be on it immediately. Mr. Tony, what did you say again? I said you will have to excuse me from church duties for some time. I just got promoted at work and I need to put in the energy, time and work. I am not leaving the church, this is temporary. Please, bear with me. No Mr. Tony, any work that you are doing that isn't allowing you serve God isn't a work. You should quit. Will you feed me and pay for my bills when I stop working? In fact, in what way have you add to me financially? My goodness. I didn't mean to say that, Pastor. It came out wrongly. Please, sir, respect my decision. I am an adult, a strong Christian and a prayer warrior. I'll resume soon. I need to leave immediately. Wow, may the peace of the Lord be with you. I must really confess, sir, I have never enjoyed this kind of luxury before. I am so happy for the opportunity, sir. This is so massive. This is just few of the things you will see and enjoy. Just relax and work well. You'll enjoy. I am already enjoying, sir. It is a great pleasure working with you, sir. It's nothing, Tony. We are going to the beach, cinema and then there's a small party organized by one of my friends. You'll have much to eat today. Thank you, sir. This restaurant is so beautiful and their food are lovely. They taste so nice. I'm very sure it will be very expensive. Yes. I learned the boss brings his family here almost every weekend. And he spends so much. That man is really enjoying. What's your plan for tonight? We can go see the movie together. Nice idea. I am in for anything enjoyment. I have suffered for too long. My time has finally come to torment Tony, and to put him in everlasting bondage. I have lured him. Tony. Your new position, your shiny possessions, they are but baubles, distractions meant to lead you astray. That female assistant at your side, a temptation in human form, a test of your resolve, my own agent KF destruction. She has succeeded in ruining you and stealing from you. You've conquered many with your prayers, but not anymore. You can't even help yourself, Tony. Can you resist the whispers of doubt, the seeds of pride that I sow in your mind? And the lust for money and material things. A fool. Lusting after worldly things, 
<laughs> Master. I have completed the task you gave me. I have rendered him powerless. He's a man without authority. He has lost his spiritual eyes and he can no longer feel God's presence. Thank you. It is time for us to torture him with sickness, poverty, pain, sorrow and hunger. I have developed immunity against all his prayers and he can no longer command me like he used to. Now, is the time. Because of his sins, he allowed me use his body whenever I like, as a portal to deal with Tony. I shall take my leave now. I have a headache. I am not feeling fine at all. Tony. How dare you steal from me? Sir, I can swear with anything. I didn't steal from you. I do not know how the money got into my account. I am not lying sir. Please forgive me. Tony. You have been sacked. You must return all the properties the company gave you. I don't need your service here again. You can't do that to me sir. I am used to this lifestyle. I promise you, I didn't steal your money. Please, believe me. If you don't leave here this minute, I'll have you arrested. Lord Jesus, where are you? Why did this happen to me? It's been long I prayed intensely last. Over four months. I missed the communication I once had with God. I'll continue praying now that I don't have anywhere to go to or who to meet. <laughs> what a fool. He just realized that he has not been fellowshipping with God because he's no longer rich. What a fool. I am bringing sickness to your doorstep now. I want to talk to you. You have created a long distance between us. Even if I talk to you, you cannot hear me again. I have been talking to you, but your sins have made you gone far from me. It has created a long distance between us. Tony. What are you saying? Abba Father. Tony, I do not dwell in an unholy place. Look at me, and look at you. Your sins have kept you in the dark. Your lack of fellowship and love for material things has created a barrier between you and I. I can't remember this dream. I am trying so hard to remember. This strange sound again? Ah! My chest. What is wrong with me? I am having a very bad chest pain. I need to go to the hospital. I am sorry about your health Mr. Tony. I came immediately I heard. I have been trying to see you all these while, but you wouldn't allow me come close. How do you feel now? Esther, I feel terrible. I feel like a child who has lost diamond while searching for plastic. Help me man of God. I have just concluded a seven days fasting in prayer, I fasted for three days twice last week. Yet, God did not answer my prayer. I didn't even see any sign of God. He didn't reveal himself to me like he used to. I feel like a stranger every moment I pray to God. Help me please. I need help. Mr. Tony, may I ask some questions from you? Yes sir. Before you got promoted at work, how often do you pray? Esther, I pray up to four times or more in a day. At least 10 to 20 minutes each. During weekends, I can pray for over two hours, depending on how the spirit leads. After you got promoted, how often do you pray? I won't lie pastor. I have not been consistent. I barely have five minutes to pray in a week. I was so busy with work and meetings. Okay. When last did you hear from God? I think few days before my promotion. I really can't remember. 
It's been over four months. Wow, okay. When last did you feel like you've won a battle? Pastor, I felt like all my prayer request has been answered when I got promoted. There was nothing to pray about again. I was made to believe that you can only be praying when you are poor. Once your prayer becomes answered, you barely have prayer points. Pastor, I didn't even realize there was battle to fight. I was having a good time with my life. You were deceived with little fame, and you failed. Did you even bother to ask God before you accepted the position of a managing director in your company? That's the mistake most people make. They jump at opportunities and sweet offers without hearing from God or if God wants it for us. Do you even know that God has a better and greater plan for you? What do you think happened during those times that you stopped praying or you no longer pray like you used to? You think you're getting stronger spiritually? No, devil is re-strategizing because he has already seen what you are capable of doing. Let me discuss with you three mysterious things that happen when you don't pray or when you no longer pray like you used to. 1. When you forget to pray or stop praying, you leave yourself vulnerable to various mysterious and insidious effects that can make your problems seem more resistant and tougher to overcome. Prayer, like a spiritual antibiotic, helps fortify your spiritual defenses and keeps the enemy at bay. Imagine prayer as your spiritual medication. Just as bacteria can become resistant if you stop taking your antibiotics midway through treatment, your problems can become more entrenched and resistant if you neglect your prayers. When you take a break from prayer, you inadvertently give room for the enemies of your soul to reinforce and build up their strategies against you. They use this opportunity to strengthen their grip on your life and circumstances, making it harder for you to break free. Prayer is not just a ritual. It is a powerful weapon against the forces of darkness. It strengthens your spiritual immune system, making you less susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. When you neglect prayer, your spiritual immune system weakens, leaving you vulnerable to spiritual attacks and oppression. The more you neglect prayer, the more you have to pray to conquer the attacks and break free from the enemy's grip. The best time to pray is not when you feel like it, but when you don't feel like it. It is during those times of spiritual dryness and apathy that your prayers are most needed. Praying without ceasing, as the Bible instructs, means maintaining a constant connection with God even when life gets busy or challenging. When you find yourself getting busier with work or distracted by the cares of this world, it is often a sign that you need to pray more, not less. Isaiah 59, 1 reminds us that God's ear is not deaf to our cries, nor is his arm too short to save. It is our sins and iniquities that separate us from God and hinder our prayers. Therefore, it is crucial to maintain a regular and fervent prayer life to stay connected to God and protected from the schemes of the enemy. 2. When you forget to pray or stop praying, you risk losing your spiritual authority, and your words can become powerless. In Matthew 16:19, Jesus said to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This statement highlights the importance of spiritual authority and the power of prayer in exercising that authority. Spiritual authority is the believer's right to exercise power and influence in the spiritual realm. It is granted by God and is rooted in our relationship with Him. When we neglect prayer, we neglect our connection to God and Consequently, our spiritual authority weakens. Just as a muscle weakens through lack of use, so too does our spiritual authority diminish through lack of practice. Prayer is not just about making requests to God, 
it is about aligning our will with his and partnering with him to accomplish his purposes on earth. When we pray, we release spiritual power and authority into the world. Our words become like arrows, hitting their mark and bringing about God's will in our lives and the lives of others. However, when we neglect prayer, our words lose their potency. They become empty and devoid of power. It is like trying to operate a machine without electricity. Our efforts are in vain. Without prayer, we are powerless to effect change in the spiritual realm, and our lives become susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. Maintaining a regular and fervent prayer life is essential for preserving and strengthening our spiritual authority. Just as an athlete must train regularly to maintain peak performance, so too must we exercise our spiritual muscles through prayer to maintain our spiritual authority. By staying connected to God through prayer, we can walk in the fullness of our spiritual authority and see His kingdom come and His will be done in our lives and the world around us. 3. When you forget to pray or stop praying, several mysterious things can happen to your spiritual life, affecting your sense of God's presence, increasing your susceptibility to deception, and diminishing your awareness of spiritual realities. One of the most profound effects of neglecting prayer is a diminished sense of God's presence in your life. Prayer is a vital means of communication with God, and when you neglect this communication, it's like putting up a barrier between yourself and Him. In John 14 21, Jesus says, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. When you neglect prayer, you miss out on the intimate fellowship with God that comes from seeking him in prayer, and as a result, your sense of his presence diminishes. Another mysterious consequence of neglecting prayer is an increased susceptibility to deception. The enemy is constantly seeking to deceive and lead astray God's people, and when you neglect prayer, you become more vulnerable to his schemes. 2 Peter 3, 8 warns, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. This passage reminds us of the importance of remaining vigilant and sober-minded in our spiritual walk, as the enemy is always seeking to deceive and lead us away from the truth. Additionally, Neglecting prayer can lead to a shrinking awareness of God and His work in your life and the world around you. Just as physical eyesight dims with neglect, so too does your spiritual vision when you neglect prayer. If a Science 118 speaks of the need for the eyes of our hearts to be enlightened, that we may know the hope to which God has called us. When you neglect prayer, your spiritual eyes are shut to the realities of the spiritual realm and you become blind to the work of God in your life and the world around you. Pastor, I have just realized that I have truly sinned against God. I left him. He always wants to talk to me. I usually have this feeling that I need to pray, but something else will just take my time. I ignored all the signs he gave me, and got engrossed with worldly things. Many Christians are like me, once they get blessed a little they forget their fellowship with God. They no longer pray fervently because they feel their prayers has been answered, hence, they need to relax. I feel guilty. God loves me, that's why he always talked to me. He told me few weeks before I got promoted that a big blessing is coming my way, I thought it was the promotion. That was why I did everything to keep the job. Know this Mr. Tony. Anything that keeps you away from the things of God is not from God. Any work that stops you from working for God, praying or reading the Bible is not a blessing from God. If you are working, you should be able to find your private or quiet time for God. You should be able to serve Him. If your work is not allowing you, talk to God to bless you with a more comfortable work. 
Nothing should hinder your relationship with God. I need to take back my position in the presence of God. I need to be that fervent, strong Christian who would command devil and his cohort to flee and he will flee. I am currently sick, I haven't been this sick in my life. I know it is a spiritual attack. So many bad things have been happening lately. I need to fight back and take back my mantle. I need God to avenge for me and restore all I've lost. What do I do, Pastor? To be refired for Christ, to reactivate your spiritual eyes, to recover your stolen authority and privileges. Here are two key steps you can take. 1. Repentance before the Lord. Acknowledge before God that you have not been vigilant in prayer and have neglected your spiritual life. Confess this as a sin and ask for his forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 assures us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repentance opens the way for restoration and renewed fellowship with God. 2. Commitment to fervent warfare prayer and fasting. Warfare prayer is a type of prayer that specifically targets spiritual battles and strongholds. It involves praying with intensity and persistence, calling on the power of God to break through spiritual barriers. Fasting can accompany this prayer as a way to deepen your dependence on God and focus your spiritual attention. You must commit to a time of dedicated prayer and fasting, seeking God's face and asking for His intervention in your life. As you engage in this spiritual discipline, you will begin to see breakthroughs in your spiritual life. Matthew 17:21 reminds us that some spiritual strongholds require prayer and fasting for their defeat. In addition to these steps, it is crucial to cultivate a consistent and vibrant prayer life. Regularly spend time in prayer, reading God's Word, and seeking His presence. By prioritizing prayer and seeking God diligently, you will experience a restoration of your sense of God's presence, a renewed discernment to recognize deception, and an increased awareness of spiritual realities. Mr. Tony, allow God take over and you'll see how God I'll fight for you. One thing you must remember to do is to be sincere with yourself and let God take over. God bless you. Close your eyes let us pray. Dear God, I come before you humbled and broken, recognizing how far I've strayed from the path of righteousness. I once stood strong and fervent in my faith, but the world has pulled me down, and I have lost my way. Lord, I long for the intimacy I once shared with you. I yearn for the authority and power that comes from being in Christ. I miss the joy, peace, and assurance that only your presence can bring. Please forgive me for allowing the things of this world to distract me and draw me away from you. Help me to rekindle the fire of my faith, to seek you earnestly, and to walk closely with you once again. Restore to me the benefits of being in Christ the joy of salvation, the peace that surpasses all understanding, and the authority to overcome every obstacle. I surrender my life to you afresh, asking for your guidance and strength to live a life that honors you. May your will be done in my life, and may I experience the fullness of your presence and blessings. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved Tony, I hear your heart's cry and I want you to know that I love you deeply. In Luke 10 19, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Your desire to return to me has not gone unnoticed, and I am here to remind you that you are free indeed. The things of this world may have pulled you down, but I have conquered the world, and in me, you have victory. As you turn your heart back to me, I will restore to you the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within you. Walk in the authority I have given you, knowing that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Trust in me, 
and I will guide you into all truth. Your relationship with me is precious, and I am eager to restore it to its fullness. I underestimated the power of God in Tony's life. I thought I could keep him bound by the things of this world, but he has found true freedom in Christ. I regret the day I tried to deceive him and pull him away from his faith. Now, he walks in the authority and power that God has given him, and there is nothing I can do to stop it. I have lost this battle, but I will not stop trying to deceive others. I will continue to roam the earth seeking whom I may devour, but Tony is no longer one of them. His faith is strong and he is a living testimony to the grace and power of God. I regret the day I tried to destroy him, for now, he is stronger than ever in Christ.